Hi everyone, this is James Braithwaite with Braithwaite Physiotherapy here in Toronto and we're going to talk to you in a series of videos over the next you know, few weeks, couple of months uh, surrounding stability, how to stabilize joints which is such a common and, and fundamental aspect of rehab after injury to any joint. You have to first focus on stabilizing it in the functional recovery, right? So when we talk about exercise oriented stuff, there's a pyramid and the foundation of that pyramid is stability. On top of that goes your strength, and on top of that goes power. So power is your ability to generate force quickly, as you might in jumping or serving a tennis ball, right? But first, we do, we do the stability. And we're gonna start with the shoulder. And I've said in the past in videos that shoulders are, uh, they're a finicky joint. And the, the issue is that they're awesome because they've got so much mobility, right? I mean, your shoulder is the only joint where you really, you get to pull one of these, right? You don't get to do that at your elbow or your knee or even your hip but your shoulder has that type of mobility. Awesome, great, we love that. But the problem with that mobility is that it's inherently a little sloppy, it's a little unstable too, because the, the sort of ball and socket construction is actually much more like a ball on a wall. That concavity of the socket's really shallow. So there's a lot of slipping and sliding that can happen, and that slipping and sliding can um, you know, impinge on structures, can make it um, easier to uh, uh, you know, tear things, um, and that's what creates these recurring chronic shoulder problems, that, that inherent lack of stability. So let's talk about what you can do to stabilize your shoulder as you recover from an injury, whether it's a little rotator cuff thing, a bursitis, any, any of those types, or if you've had like a dislocation, these are the types of things you might start to focus on as you initiate your recovery. So um, the trick really is in being able to engage the rotator cuff musculature to centralize the ball in the sockets. What, what, what do I mean by that? Well, as you sit there with the ball in the socket, it can sort of sit um, either nice and central in the socket or it can be um, uh, deviated to the front, to the back. Um, it can be elevated. Um, if it's grossly unstable, it'll be sadly uh, depressed in the socket. We don't want that. But what most people end up doing is um, sitting there with this anteriorly deviated, this forward deviated shoulder position, which ends up being stressful on a lot of the structures at the front of the shoulder. And we like to take the pressure off of those structures. So when I say centralizing the ball in the socket, what I mean is going from one of these to one of these, right? And the way that you do that is to engage your rotator cuff musculature. Now it's one thing for me to just say, oh, you know what, you should, rot you should engage your rotator cuff musculature. But what does that mean? I mean, it's not like I go around every day you know, actively engaging my rotator cuff, and nor does anyone else. It's not, it's not something that we consciously do a lot. So I like to use other cues to sort of engage those muscles. And one key one that I like to recommend, and this is what I'm going to ask, challenge you to do um, uh, for your homework as you watch this video, is um, do this action where you're imagining that you're, there's a couple of cues, but one I really like is imagining that you're turning your underarm forward. So I'm rotating so that I'm out rotating my shoulder so that my underarm is pointing just a little bit more forward than it might be otherwise. Now my underarm is pointing down and back. Now my underarm is pointing forward. Do you see that? And if you look at my hands, like if I really engage my whole arm in this, this is the uh, underarm pointing down and back. And then I out rotate, you can see my hands moving as my underarm starts to point more forward. Now I don't actually have to have the hands do that. I can have the uh, underarm point forward. I can engage that cue without having any change in the position of my hand. But when you start, that's something that you might look at. Where are my hands? If they're around front, then my underarm is pointing down and back. If they're more at my side, then my underarm is pointing a little bit more forward. And, and that pointing forward is a sign that we've engaged that rotator cuff musculature, which is again <coughs> centralizing that ball in that socket. So. Um, another cue that people like to use is that lifted chest, right? But the only, and, and that's great, I would encourage you on the lifted chest if, you're, if that's the way that you roll. But uh, remember that um, if you're doing a lifted chest type cue that you're not really pinching the shoulder blades together. It's not a military posture, it's a really subtle thing. Um, it's really a, a subtle rotate, uh, um, flattening of the shoulder blade against the, the, the trunk and, a, and again a rotation of the uh, of the ball in the socket joint, right? So another cue that you can, or another formal exercise that you can do, is you can do a wall push up. So you'll get your hands pointing up against a wall or a countertop, but I like a wall, and you're going to get your hands pointing straight up. They're parallel. Your fingers are parallel and po pointing straight up. And then with my hands anchored like that, 
I'm going to now go ahead and do that little cue where I point my underarm forward. So I'm rotating, rotating my that ball and socket. I'm I'm rotating my arm so that my underarm is facing forward. You can see the the front of my elbow. This thing goes from facing uh, this way to facing up. See how it's facing more up right now. So there's another cue there. And then from there, with that engaged, I'm going to do these little wall push-ups like this, keeping that underarm pointing forward the whole time. And that really is going to challenge my shoulder to be able to maintain that position under a little bit of load. So here's a fun trick for you. Every time you walk out a door of your office, say for example at your workplace, take three, you know, 30 seconds, not even 30 seconds, 10 seconds to do five of these wall push-ups. Fingers facing parallel and straight up, do the rotation, push up, boom, like that. Two, three, four, five. And in life, I want you to start adopting this underarm pointing forward position. Chest is tall, you can even add in a little chin tuck there to just sort of square up the whole posture. And that is the foundation of a well-supported shoulder joint. So go practice that, have some fun with that. If you have any questions, of course, you know, send them along to me. Um, I'm always happy and excited to hear about what people are thinking of, of the work that they're doing with their own home rehab. Um, and if you have any questions about this or any other element of physiotherapy, don't hesitate to contact me as well. And we look forward to seeing you in the next few videos where we look at how to stabilize various joints through the body. It's gonna be a lot of fun, so see you then.